We're going through Ben Patrick's knees over toes, four of his best exercises that we've been using. And uh, I think, you know, you're going to like them too. Yeah. If you, if you want to look and skip ahead to any of the exercises specifically, go on through the chapters and click on through and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Let's get started. Knees over toes guy. We asked him to be on the show. He's too busy. He's got a lot to do. I get I'm, it. I understand it. I get it. But, uh, you know, we got to bring some of these exercises to our listeners. We need to talk about the four best exercises that he's got going. He's got a couple other ones, but these are probably the best from ground zero to work up that you probably would never want to eliminate out of your training. Well, they're the ones, uh, they're the ones that I definitely wasn't doing. Like, sure. When sure. I looked through his list, I was like, I, nope. Nope. Uh, three, and three and four, no. So I've done none of these exercises. And apparently, according to him, they are crucial for building a strong and, more important, long-lived knee. I would, uh, I would agree. You know, I came, I got my master's in exercise sciences. I got my CSCS. Nothing ever was talking about loading your knee. Nothing ever was talking about building strength from your kneecap and all that kind of stuff. Everything was... Wait on your heels, mm -hmm. drive through your glutes, right. keep your knees behind your toes. And it's just kind of interesting because even when you hurt something and you go through some rehab protocol, we're looking at glutes, hammies, IT bands, and it's not really ever training the front. So let's get through these four exercises right. and then we'll kind of uh, chit chat a little bit about some of the stuff. I think his first one is, is one of the ones that there are modifications for if you don't have a sled, but the sled's a great like it's a great starting place. I would say that if you don't have a sled, he offers tons of modifications. We'll add some as well. Mm -hmm. um, but utilizing some ballistic bands or those 41 inch pull up bands, you can do it with a partner relatively easy. And if you chain a bunch of them together, you get uh, some give. You have a lot of working range. So imagine if you have ballistic bands and you've got four or five of them if you chain all those up together you have a working range to move forwards and backwards of maybe like 10 to 12 feet mm -hmm. so that also can work but I mean, his right sleds here, he's pushing a sled what do you think uh 50 feet 60 feet yeah probably his so his entire thing i like how he starts it off even right now he's showing it yeah he, the, the goal is range of motion i want you to toe down back through the heel really engage the feet. knees over toes. Yeah, feet. Uh, exactly. You know, I think when you first start doing pulls and pushes, you actually do understand that your feet are completely out of shape if that was a thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> and the crazy part is the very first information you're given by a rehab specialist or anything else is like push through the heels, which takes your feet out of it entirely. Completely. You, you can't push through the toes if you're putting all of your weight into your heels. It's very interesting. When I first started playing with this stuff, I noticed that the more that I dropped my foot back, the more I had a little discomfort. So I'd lighten the load a little bit more, and it was fine and dandy. But it wasn't until I spun around and started utilizing the push when my feet kind of sort of started to evolve rapidly. Within like three or four weeks, my feet... I wasn't getting fatigued in my feet. And oh. as soon as my feet weren't getting fatigued, when I was doing the drags backwards, mm -hmm. much different feeling through my knees. I mean, it, it he's not lying. He's pulled mm -hmm. sleds an awful lot of times Absolutely. and he knows the evolution of it. Right. So so in his evolution, what he's got is now he's starting to move faster. He's trying to bring up the, the body. And I think his whole goal is you start off getting the body moving, move the sled, get it, get it slowly moving. Then as you get better and better, He's talking now about jumping. Think about jumping through the movement. When right. you jump through the movement, you're adding uh, effort and emphasis through one leg at a time. I think those things are really big. Well, the jumping also, I hate to be the foot guy right now because we're mm -hmm. talking knees, but sure. when you start driving and pushing, you feel it more and more through your feet mm -hmm. and then you drive up through your legs. If you're kind of doing that slow motion deal, a lot of times you can almost get away with being a mid to a heel striker mm -hmm. if you're not consciously working towards the front right. so it's something you'll really feel and i think the important part especially about these things these sled movements is it's giving you an opportunity to find your weaknesses if you find that your feet are your weakness well that's good to know because the weakness is right. what you need to work on if you're finding your quads are lighting up way too early well, that's good to know that means your quads are probably your thing and if you're not engaging your glutes at all you're probably going to find it through these ma major motions that you're putting your body through and it's a super scalable thing. You don't have to do super heavy loads. You can stay mm -hmm. light 
anybody could anchor you if you were moving backwards. Yep. Uh, moving forwards, that might be a little bit different story if you're trying to drag someone. Sure. Um, but you want to find the weight that challenges you, but you can go back and forth for a while. The way he semi-recommends it. Uh, like four-minute shot. Yeah, right? you, you're going to go through a window and get your cardio in at mm -hmm. all one time. Now, you can break that up in different sets and things. I don't know if that's completely imperative that it's yeah. like, oh, you're working for a 20-minute you know, sled run. Um, so let's let's talk through, like, I don't have a sled. I don't have a space where I can push a sled. I don't have those sorts of things. You don't want to kill 20, 30 yards in your backyard, no more grass? I mean, just deadening it up. Yeah, yeah. like, so... I'll say one of the things I've been using at the fire station is we have a very small weight room and this is going to sound really janky, but it, it's worked. I take a resistance band and I wrap it around the weight bench in front of me and I get on a treadmill. All the weight, all the resistance band is doing is resisting me trying to walk backwards. Right now I put my, again, I, I if anyone pops in on me, they're looking at me running backwards, boom, 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 dragging boom. A, a weight. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. They're taking pictures of you and you don't know it. Oh, I mean like through the window. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking backwards. I'm walking backwards on the treadmill. I've got- Treadmill the, is going forwards. Treadmill's going, yeah. it's normal thing. Gotcha. I'm just on it backwards. Uh, I've got my weight belt that you would normally hang like a, a 45 on if you're going to do dips or something like that. And it's attached to the, the resistance band. Resistance band. Now all I'm doing is walking backwards. I can up the resistance by making it a, a, a thicker band. Uh, or what I can do is go slow and really focus on my range of motion. It's been a really good option for me, given that I don't have the space for it. But it's still, your knee still hurts. Well, we're getting closer because it's, it's, it's getting better. So it, maybe we'll do, we'll do an add on to this in like yeah, uh, two no, months. No, no, no. This leads into the second exercise okay. and where you need to go. All right. Hit because down. I was doing the sled poles. Mm -hmm. I'm all on board with the cardio aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm all on board with the leg workout without doing these heavier loads as you get a little bit older. And completely. it's a great warm up. Sure, sure. Completely on board with the push. The pull pushes more feet. You get it in your legs. Pull is going to be more of your quads. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, the heavier the load, you'd be kind of surprised if you're doing them with bands. Tons in your hips. Mm -hmm. My hips would be super sore they when I did tight. very, very heavy loads backwards. Nonetheless, though, my, Second knee, exercise. my knee did not start feeling significantly better until I did two different exercises. The first one being his recommended uh, split squat. Okay. I personally have never done, I've done loaded split squats with weight uh, on the heel with let's the go, knee behind the toe. What is the split squat most like? What, what exercise am I going to recognize if I see someone doing a split squat? Uh, you would have weight on your shoulders mm -hmm. and you would be in a static position. Your feet would be split and you'd probably squat down and then squat back up, holding your legs still, you okay. know, you'd be in a, a so you, static position we're, or we're you'd modifying. do like a, a reverse lunge kind of a concept, or you'd okay. have dumbbells and do a walking lunge. All that stuff's cool. Which they're all Not saying, a split go through, squat. yeah, they're all saying go through your heels on these, right? Split squat is they, different because. This thing is very interesting because once again, when you come from this background, you are not attempting to roll up onto the ball of your foot. And if you don't roll up onto the ball of your foot, then you kind of really can't get deep into the knee mm -hmm. as you'll see in some of these videos where he's sunk way forward. He's on the ball of his foot. But as soon as you take your heel off the ground and get rid of those constraints, well, you naturally get there. Right. But what you find is two things. One, your hip flexor is insanely tight that it doesn't allow you to get into that position. And that's on your back, your back leg. Your hip flexor yes. is too tight to let you get up there. Yeah. So what I've noticed is my right knee mm -hmm. is the problem knee. That hip flexor, when I use my left knee, is insanely tight. Right. So it's shown me that my hip flexor on the bad knee side is very tight. And it also allows you to really get down in that knee. And as long as you use a little bit of assistance, you find that, oh man, blood flow, feeling good. After 12 reps, that little knife gets taken out of there. After mm -hmm. uh, you keep going through 40, 50 seconds of it, I do most things by time just because I'm always working out by myself. And when you work out by yourself, you know, early in the morning, those little alarms are really helpful. So I always do everything by times. Don't really worry too much about uh, the amount of repetition. So mm -hmm. alarm goes off. I'm going 60 seconds. I'm trying to do 30 seconds and 30 seconds on each leg. But when you roll up on the ball of your foot and sink right. down into your kneecap, you kind of find that your hips are not even mm -hmm. from one leg to the other because one's more tight. And oddly enough, one of them is probably your bad knee side is the right. tight hip flexor. But the more you get in your kneecap, 
Oh man, I'm telling you, that's the exercise you need to do. So I'll I'll go here because I think it's really important as we talk through you know how to vary these things. Uh, this is one of the more extreme exercises that he does as far as like it goes against most of the regular instruction that people give. Uh, you're not in your heel. You've put your knee way out over, which means you're loading the patella a lot. Um, so it's really easy to overload that patella and create strains. So where I started. Okay. Well, let's, let's do knee first. Cause I want to get to the hip flexor in a second. Let's do yeah, knee first. Where I started was doing the exercise mm-hmm. as it was. And what I would do is stand underneath a suspension trainer. So yep. I use our duo and I stick my arms in it or I use my hands. I have weenie forearms. So after a while, my elbows start to bother me from all the grip stuff uh, that I do with skiing. But uh, so I'll, I've set my arms in it some mornings, but most of the time, if I'm feeling good, I hold the handles in my hands. Mm-hmm. And what I'll do is I'll lunge out and I'll hold some of my body weight in my hands, similar to that assisted pull up we've talked about. Right. But when you get you down t- to that, you take some of the weight off oh, yeah. when that patella is loaded. Yeah. So, I mean, you take 60 pounds off my back and go down in there. And then when I want to step up, pull a little bit, mm-hmm. that's where I start. So it's very lightweight, very minimal in my knee. Less uh, likely you're going to oh, get a strain in the, in the muscles and the ligaments. I work out at 6 a.m. There ain't not one part of my body that wants to lunge down there with full body weight. But if you hold it just in your relax. hand, relax. It'll be okay. We're just gonna push through just, this. Just go back to bed. You don't want this. You don't want this. I mean, imagine. I, hear you. I just, I wanna, I wanna be shredded. After like five minutes of stretching, I'm literally all the way to the floor, mm-hmm. knee over toe, and I'm telling you, it's it, use a little bit of assistance, do three or four mm-hmm. reps, and you're in the game. So the other spot that I found that really gets dangerous is when you start adding weight, because people are like, well, haven't done it. Well, exactly. Not there. I think adding the weight is much, much further along. And this is the second reason is that hip flexor. When you don't have a lot of uh, mobility in that hip flexor, what you're, what you will naturally do is you will arch your back to make the space. Everyone will do this. You might not even notice that you're doing it, but if you try the split squat, start noticing that you, you kind of arch your back to make the space that, that hip flexor can't accomplish. When that happens, you now are creating a very bad column for holding weight. So if you decide, I can do one-legged squats really easily. I can do lunges really easily. I can do all these things really easily. I'm going to keep weight up here on my shoulder. When you do that and you've got that hip flexor that's not stretched correctly and you put that back way out of line and you've kept weight up here and you're doing that split squat, you'll find yourself getting injured in a way that you didn't intend to and that he's not recommending you do. And so that's the problem. Like As you're doing these exercises, you will compensate for your lackings. So you have to start from the ground up and really focus on your range of motion. It is nuts once you start doing some of these odd exercises, how light the load really is. If you're a big lifter and and you feel as though you're kind of a pansy when it comes to uh, body weight movements, all Mm -hmm. this, if you're a big pull-up guy, it's easier to swallow. If you're moving iron all the time and then Mm -hmm. you find out that you don't need any weight and you and you kind of feel too much tension in your knee or too much tension in your hips, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Or you kind of discredit the exercise. Like, what's this going to do for me, you know? Right. I, I'm not lifting the load that I normally do. What kind of exercise or what kind of weight am I really getting? And I think the the important thing is most of these exercises are about longevity of joints, which comes from using those accessory muscles that keep that joint strong. And those are the things that I have definitely lacked in all of my exercise throughout time. Well, that split squat... In itself, use some suspension straps or uh, you could probably get under like, um, let me think. If you have a tricep extension machine at the mm-hmm. firehouse, load up the weight, put the whole stack on there. And use right? it to lift And them. then use the ropes uh, so that it'd be kind of near your face when you go down there. You that can would also probably take, work. You can also take those foam rollers or anything like that and stack, like basically use them to help press yourself up if you're more of a presser or a or weight bench next to you. Dip bars on a squat rack if anything they're adjustable. Like yep. Um, Let's or, go to exercise three. But what I was going to say real quick about sure. that split squat is what I noticed is I was always doing tons of hip flexor stretching to mm-hmm. try to get my right hip flexor. I knew it was tight. This wasn't new news. So, And what I found for pointing out the painful obvious, all of the stretching that I had been doing Mm -hmm. didn't really seem to like loosen up the joint near as much as doing these split squat Mm -hmm. exercises. And when I stretch doing the things I used to do, it doesn't even stretch me. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that loaded range of motion, you're loading the range of motion. Yeah. 
it I helps mean, you dip into your space. It, it's changed the way that my hip moves. And then now my knee is getting looser. I'll give you an example. I use uh, a band around my foot for many stretching angles. I do the hamstring. Mm-hmm. I always do the groin. I T band. And then I'll roll over and do a combined quad hip flexor stretch. Mm-hmm. And what you'll find is that if you put your foot on your butt and you're in this odd position getting scorpion. Yeah, like the scorpion, yeah. But if you lay back on your foot a little bit, like let your butt roll back to your foot, you almost load the whole leg, right? So now the ground's pushing on your foot as well Mm -hmm. while you're pulling this. So you've now got your knee behind your back. Right. And then you load the joint. Probably maybe a month ago when I would do that on my right side, my right knee, the bad knee, Mm -hmm. tons of pressure in my knee. Okay. Tons of pressure. I could barely do it. Left one, not so bad. Sure. Left, left knee doesn't hurt. Sure. Right knee, as soon as I would lay back on it and I'd have that everything stretch, my hip flexor would be engaged, the quad stretched, tons of pressure. All that's completely gone. Hmm. No pressure in the knee. It feels the exact same as the other side. I haven't been getting any daggers or anything like that throughout and the day. And this is one month of just the split squat for the I've, most part. No, I've been... One, probably two months on the split squat. I've been doing sleds for probably since January. Mm-hmm. Um, so and this, is a, this is a long term. Yeah, I've been built. I've That's been messing good. with a lot of this stuff. This this right knee I have. Unfortunately, it's one of those deals when you are all out uh, into training, and then all of a sudden the stuff doesn't seem to work mm-hmm. in a joint. You know, and traditionally it's been, oh, I probably have something going on in there. I may need surgery, and. I've been a component of the shoulder stuff all along. Sure. Let's go ahead and do all these shoulder rehab exercises that everyone that I knew playing ball all got shoulder surgery. And the doctor said, well, is it hurting a ton now? Oh yeah, I can barely move my arm. Are you doing the rehab? Well, no, I haven't been doing much of it lately. They do it for two weeks and they were completely back to normal. So it's kind of almost like you have these damaged joints that if you would just work them all the time, you don't exactly have to get cut on. Right. You, you might be able to find some strength and some relief if you relax the joint. Right, which right. That's kind of what I find most interesting about some of these exercises is it's like full range of motion slash loaded. Right. And it's almost like decompressing the joint in addition to building strength in that position. It, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's a, com- a, yeah, like it's a complex, it's a complex scenario of strength and stretch. That's yoga. Yeah. Dang it. We're back into yoga, but, <laughs> ah! no, but, but uh, look at this stretch here. This is one that I was, I've been flirting with this stretch a little bit. Uh, let's go back. So you guys can see it. If you're listening, get to uh, a it's video and you'll see this stretch come up and it's where you put your heel to your butt and you slide it underneath something or you put it against a wall. And what you'll do is you slide up forward, but that position when you are forward is pretty intense and his level of flexibility That's in that insane. position. I don't know that I don't know that you really can put that into context unless you've ever done this stretch. When you put your leg, in that position behind you, mm-hmm. you can barely sit upright if you've never done it before. Right, Your hip flexor well, is so well, and tight. your kneecap tends to be on the ground, which is why the pad's under him. But if you extend it back behind you, exactly, you lose that pain exactly. because you're not on the cap anymore. Exactly. So this particular spot where he's fully engaged like this, this is, I guarantee you, where, where you'll be, and this is where I started, mm-hmm. is you'll be in this position, you'll be able to load it all up. But what you'll do is your hands will be on the mat. Yes. You'll be laying all the way forward yes. and nothing will be loaded. And what you'll do is you lean up just a little bit, just a little bit. And soon get a brick, get a, yeah. get a block, yeah. get a weight bench, get a, keep moving more and more vertically. Right. And so, yeah, soon you'll be able to sit in this position, but I will tell you that that did not get me there. I was doing this stretch mm-hmm. and still was not getting that pressure out of my knee until I started doing the split squats like that as well. So it's, it's the stretch plus the squat. Yeah. I mean, I I go back and I do this stretch and it does stretch me and I feel it, but I don't think I was at all progressing to the level of what the split squat did for even that stretch. You getting that deep? I could probably do that. I could probably do that. I wouldn't be happy about it. See, he has like a little yeah, he, pain in his face. Yeah, you can see the pain like, in the face. Yeah, my face yeah. would not look like that. It would no. look much worse. Mine would look like I would I would be breathing. Like. 
Yeah, there wouldn't be much talking. You know, when you're running and people are like, "Hey, stay in zone two where you can where you can talk Just to your talk. neighbor still." Yeah. There will be no Mm-mm. talking in this zone. That's my favorite part about doing some of these stretches. It's I'm not. I'll I'll breathe harder through a really bad stretch than I will on a on a light jog. Yeah. Oh, I get it. it it's pretty intense. But as I was saying though, that split squat, in addition to some of these stretches, but mainly the split squat, will give you all of that. Interesting. Yeah, right. that that flexibility will give you. I think exercise I, well, bam, two is right there. Pause it. We're there. <laughs> it's the Nordic uh, the Nordic curl. Uh, this is this is his third third major str- uh, strength for the knee, and it is the opposite side of the knee. So the the thing we started out with the split squat is going to be mostly in your quad. You're going to push a lot through there. A lot of your um, uh, sled pulling is through your quad. There's some glute work, but but now we're hitting the other side of the knee. And I think this is important because the knee is surrounded by these uh, muscles and uh, ligaments that cross that joint. And if you're not balancing both sides, you're creating an imbalance that will eventually cause problems. Most people recognize that imbalance in your um, tendonitis, or sorry, not tendonitis, in your uh, uh, shin splints, which is essentially an imbalance between your calf and the, the tibialis muscle, which again, that's number four. But this one is the exact same scenario. If you have an imbalance between your quad and your hamstrings, you're also going to find knee pain because you're not supporting the joint equally from all sides. And it creates weird patellar movement and it creates all these things, which this might be part of my problem, too. But this is a this is a traditional approach, though, even previous to his stuff. Absolutely. The strength in the hamstring. If you got a bad knee, that, that's kind of part of the protocol. That's mm-hmm. nothing new. But what's different about this exercise specifically is it's once again more of a body weight style movement. Yes. And you can progressively. It's interesting because the more that you can load these things when you get straight, right? When the muscle is straight and lengthened, mm-hmm. you think of like a gymnast and yes. how much strength and power they have with a straight arm. It's kind of the same thing. You're training your hamstrings in a very loaded, straight position. But body weight exercises do something a little bit different to you. I don't know what it is about them and how all of your connective tissue works, but stabilizing a joint while it's loaded is very different than just doing hamstring curls. It's yes. very different. Well, I think it has to do with the gravity is putting your joint through a usable range of motion. When you do a hamstring curl, you're sitting. When you're sitting, your your hands. Now there are some lay down ones. That's true. You can do the lay down ones where you're you're holding onto the bench and you're popping them up, and and they they exist. I think there's something about gravity pushing down. When Could your gravity be. pushes you down, it seats the joint into itself. Like it's, uh, I think doctors call it uh, open chain and closed chain um, exercises, and and you're using gravity and your body weight to seat the joint into where it should be. When you suspend things, especially like your knees and stuff, there's nothing keeping the knee in its place except like ligaments. So when you suspend and do like a, a suspended leg raise, your you know cruciate ligaments are holding the knee in. All of your ligaments around the knee are holding the knee in place, and then you're trying to load it. But if you do the exact same exercise, basically by doing you know um, you do like a, a squat the knee is being held into place by gravity, which is pushing the knee into its joint and keeping it locked into its space. It's just a different thing. And I think that's why this works so much better than doing the hamstring curls. Well, it's, it's more intense. Uh, I mean, if you even want to go from a load perspective, doing a ham, a Nordic hamstring curl is pretty intense. If you've got the right equipment to where you can actually get up and down on your own, there's not a whole Mm -hmm. lot of people. I remember in college, we had an excellent strength coach and he would have us do these types of things all the time, as well as even band work where you manually resist either each other's hamstrings. Mm -hmm. But this exercise specifically, you know, most people that are in shape and and powerful athletes, they're going to be able to do some version of this where sure. you catch at the bottom and then you throw yourself up. For the average Joe, this is probably not even close to going to be possible. Yeah, I mean, he's about to do it no-handed and just give it a hip thrust and he right. pops up. Now, he shows many modifications. Uh, he's got some modifications where he, you lay down on a mat so you don't go quite as far down. Mm-hmm. But there's some other things you can do if you get underneath a squat rack with the band. Again, it's super effective to like assist your body. If you put that band around your chest yep. and, and then you have that mounting point down low, when you do these repetitions, you take... 10, 20, 40 pounds off your body, and then all of a sudden you're able to do this exercise as well. When you take it off of the hardest point, so when you're laid all the way down, exactly. you've got the most tension on that patella uh, and, and then the backside of the knee. 
So once you take that off, when the band is at its most extreme stretch, you're actually getting a reduction of help as you're getting more strength in your joint. So it's, I think you're right. The resistance bands are really a, a beneficial way to go around this. I've been modifying, he's got a modification here, um, but I've been modifying everything with those big long loop bands because mm -hmm. I still wanted the full range of motion. I right. still want to get down to the full range of motion. He's got that exercise. You ever seen him? Uh, we, we talked about this earlier where he lays all the way down on his feet basically and they can get back up. Yeah, it's like he's kneeling and then he just goes backwards. Well, I, I tried to do some version of that and let me tell you, that's not exactly fun. It's pretty impressive that he can do that but once again if you utilize a resistance band high on a rack and you put your hands above your head mm -hmm. if you just take a little bit of load out of your body you can do that exercise too and uh, right. most of it as long as you're able to get the joint through the range of motion without your extra mass absolutely the joint can handle it and i think the other thing to recognize too is there are there's three motions that can be done here you've got your you know concentric which is the one that everyone knows that the pull you've got your uh isometric which means you're just holding there and you've got your eccentric which almost anyone can do in this re this regard just go slowly down get up however you want but go slowly down and you're still building that strength right. through that muscle and through that full range of motion right now now this exercise there's one other modification that i should mention mm -hmm. that if you have a stability ball by far the easiest way to do this is lay on your back Put your feet up on top of that ball, bridge your body up so yep. you'll be kind of in an incline 45 mm -hmm. with your feet above your head. Roll that ball and let your hips drive up even higher yep. off the ground. It feels very similar on a much more watered down intensity level. So and if we'll, you're a way we'll beginner, your glutes a little bit more. Oh yeah, you're really trying to tighten it. Yeah, in. you you don't just bring your heels to your butt. You mm -hmm. actually take the whole hip and everything right. up with you. So if you're like a big time beginner, you know you can probably start there rather than trying to. I don't know many overweight. I mean, people. look at the face right now. He is maximum effort. Yeah, max effort. I I don't know that if you were overweight or never had done hamstrings in many. I don't even think you could do any kind of modification Possibly with not. that particular exercise. But going towards that with the with the the ball, the exercise ball, and uh, a lot of push and resistance band sure. would be something that would help out that knee joint. All right, what's Absolutely. our what's our fourth? The fourth is all of his uh, tibialis training. Mm -hmm. He spends a lot of time talking about how it can prevent your shin splints, and then also support the muscles in your ankle, um, really helping to load that whole joint right. to be more explosive. And we talked a little bit about sh the Let's shin splints idea a little bit before, which is like you, a lot of people use calf raises. A lot of people are, are aware of calf raises. When you're doing running, runners get it a lot because their, their calves are trained because that's what you do when you run. Uh, but the alternate side of the body is the tibialis, which raises the foot. If you're not training the raising of the foot, you start creating a place where like all of those muscles start hurting. And I know in rehab, what they'll basically have you do is sit down and start uh, spelling the, like you, you make the alphabet with your toe and move the ankle all around, trying to get it to move through its range of motion. Eventually you'll do it with like a resistance band or something. He's saying out of the gate, add these exercises, which are a little bit harder to find because not a lot of weight training places have that piece of equipment no i think uh i listened to a video from him that he actually made a, a foot contraption because he likes to do them with one leg and if yes. you do it with one leg then you're not getting you get more of the stability factor in the ankle rather than having two feet support itself with the one that we actually have here in the shot that's uh both right. feet being involved at the same right. time you're, you're creating a hinge you're not creating a a fully mobile ankle right you know, ankles are important too. I mean, it, it kind of, that was one of the pieces that is also loaded when you're trying to do those sled walks. That's kind of impressive. You know? Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So this tibialis motion, what it, what it gives for you is the strength on the front of the leg, but you also got to remember that comes up to the, the top of the tibia and the bottom of where your knee is. So if you're having issues that are, that are coming from some of those extreme angles and things, the tibialis becomes something that's very, very beneficial. Well, he, he mentions quite often with the tibialis stuff that it supports the knee. All those one-footed jumps, whenever you load the joint, you know, you have all that force going down on one knee. Um, that muscle is going to be a big contributor into stabilizing your joint when you're jumping off one foot. Yep. And in, in, you know, we talked in the very beginning about how um, if you're going to move through the space with your legs, you're going to use all three joints, hip, 
knee, and ankle. If any of them have a problem, a reduction, an injury, they're going to compound any problems you have on the other ones as well. So if you don't have a strong set of ankle um, tightening muscles, including you know your calves and your, and your tibialis, that is going to transition up to your knees and it's going to transition up to your hips. So strengthening the 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 muscles that that articulate your ankle are beneficial for the entire column of your leg. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, yeah. He's got a lot of good stuff. You know, one of the craziest things about the whole deal is have you seen all the different videos where doctors are more or less reviewing his information, saying, yeah. "Oh my gosh, uh, have you have you seen this new stuff from knees over toes guy?" You know, you got a little bit of audience chasing. I get it, but. Uh, you know, the whole textbook that you learn in school, absolutely how to train all this information. Yep. Kneecap stuff's not part of it. Well, when I, when I was going through exercise science uh, for my bachelor's degree, that the main thrust they said is anytime you're trying to get somebody to do their, you know, um, squats or anything, get them to push through their heels. It engages their glutes. You're not driving through the toe and make sure above all, the knee is back at least even with the toe, if not behind the toe. Yep common common practice it was always knees behind the toe i remember coming out of school and that was the way that you taught athletics it was get your knees behind your toe powerful squats use your right. glutes and hams uh or glutes and quads really drive up through the load but you know it's i i literally even myself training now i can barely do a back squat on my knees with my right knee yeah but whatever i did do it uh when i was doing that wakeboarding thing that time i i've probably for sure have somewhat of damage in there but whatever the angle has become as i've gotten a little bit older mm -hmm. loading my joint from my heel and doing heavy squats no bueno anymore well, here's the other thing i always thought was weird because when i was learning it it didn't make sense to me initially which is nothing that i do without a giant heavy weight on my shoulder do i do pressing through the heel if I take a set of stairs, I'm pressing off the ball of my foot. Sure. If I'm running, I'm running off the ball of my foot. My knees are always over my toe. Why was it such a big deal to push through the heels? Well, it's kind of interesting because there's no doubt that you're still going to train your big muscle groups. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're not spending any time on the connective tissues. Exactly. That's the difference. Yes, I mean, yes. It, it's not that you're not loading the joint. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're not going to build monster quads and huge, powerful glutes. It's that nowhere in there... Are you going to load the joint at that level, at yeah. that capacity? You know, the muscle can flex, the muscle can flex, but did you actually put the tendons under a load at their max length as well? You know, it's kind of interesting to think. Uh, I remember watching uh, several gymnasts talk about biceps. You mm -hmm. know, people want these huge biceps. And you look at a gymnast and like, hey, how many curls do you do? And they're Zero. Like, I, don't, I don't do curls. I hold my body weight up on rings. Yeah for four or five minutes at a, you know, probably not five minutes, but I can hold my body minutes weight up. at a time. And they're generally, they talk about, they are extremely strong in a lengthened, right. Contracted position. Yes. And that's what builds all the muscle. And it's kind of funny when you think of that, because the knee, if you're only doing a squat and you just have to get to 90 degrees, you're basically training the bellies of the muscles. Yes. But you're kind of never really loading the tendons. You're not loading them in that way. You know what I mean? You're not well, loading them in that fully bent position. And I think the a lot of the common knowledge comes out of what people were trying to accomplish. I want to lift the most weight that I can. I want to be a power, you know, I want to get more strength. Well, the way that anyone could add more weight was you had to take out joints that couldn't keep up. Exactly. It's the same thing when you're doing a deadlift. My fingers can't keep up anymore. I put a strap around it to take my fingers out of the equation, and now I can lift more weight again. So anytime you run up into an anatomical deficiency, the, the standard practice was we'll remove that anatomical deficiency safely so that that doesn't cause an injury. So you can build more muscle, build exactly. more muscle, build more muscle. But what the entire knees over toes guy is trying to push, and I think he's right in doing it, is mobility and strength through the full range of motion is more important than that really big number you have, especially when we're talking longevity of performance motion. as well. Yes. For max performance. It, it'll be interesting to see over the next decade or so as more people become aware of it. You know, did he literally make a program that is the new rehabilitation style practices for knees? Or did he write a performance guide for maximal explosiveness? injury free, you know, right. or, you know, you start getting all these top level guys 
doing this stuff, maybe the injuries are still going to happen. You know what yeah. I mean? It, you wonder where it will be in like a revolutionary standpoint. Will it be the rehab process or right. will this thing become some monumental shift to leg training for performance? I think it is, this is, I'm playing Nostradamus for a second. I think what it'll do is open up people's minds from the, the closed system of this is the best practices and get more into let's make our practices meet what people need. Because the best practices that were always given, I think, were for the the weight trainers and the weightlifters. And I think what we're going to see now is uh, let's do a more uh, best practices for, you know, the guy who's going up and down the stairs, the guy who's playing with his kid, the guy who uh, is, is in a softball league on the weekends. Like you're going to you're going to get people that are not looking for maximum best build of muscle they're looking for the guy that can keep his knee together all the way out until 75 and 80 well past retirement enjoying life yeah if nothing else that that's for sure what it is for sure if you uh don't care about performance and building maximal amount of muscle or being a bodybuilder or doing any of those sorts of things incorporating these several exercises that we just reviewed that uh i've done personally that i've watched tons and tons of videos on this mm -hmm. guy and uh, his advice it really is just a pretty good collection of no. workouts that you should add to your stuff. And his his breakdowns are all very, very good. And if you listen carefully, he's also giving so many good modifications that will help keep you safely moving through these exercises that many people would consider dangerous. If you take the load off, not so dangerous. Not so dangerous. That's the thing. He's a good guy. It's a great program. I, I love what we've got, and I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be continuing doing them this year. That's my plan. Yeah, I will plan on uh, the pulling sleds and pushing. I don't have a sled myself in my gym, but uh, I use the resistance band method. I wouldn't mind getting a sled, but don't really have the mm -hmm. room for it. Nordic curls, I need to get myself one of those bars. I've done them a ton in school when we were training for athletics. Uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff is part of most cutting edge um, you know, strength coaches. Sure. Uh, so it's not all that crazy, but that split squat position and, and doing some of these types of exercises with the knees, not over the toes. It'll be interesting to see what the evolution of it will be. Yeah. So you guys at home, like join us, like let's, let's be a part of the revolution. Let's, let's yeah. join knees over toes guy and let's see if we can rehab some knees. Yeah. Try some of these exercises. Leave us some comments. If you have, uh, any thoughts or let me know if they're working for you. This right knee is uh, coming around. We got to get your right and, knee on and track. It's lefty. Lefty's my problem. Lefty. Righty's your, it's. It's the other knee. It's the brother thing. Aww. We could like belt them together and do the three leg thing. We do three legged gimp race because our our knees are totally broken. I don't know. Mine's coming back. Dang it! Mine's All right, it's back. just gonna be me. And you know what? No, by September I'll be lights out. We'll All be right, ready. Let's to go. hear about it. <laughs>